Now, obviously, the issue of birth certificates is a lot more complicated than the average person might perceive them to be. In your case, you've actually got a number of birth certificates as a result of a change of address, so to speak. Yes, change of countries, change of address. And what's very interesting about it, we, we just briefly touched on the, on the grammar and, you know, the way these things are written. And obviously now the all uppercase text and all of that. Um, Lusaka here, uh, as, a, as a town, has already been incorporated back in 1955. Although Northern Rhodesia then was independent as a British colony, uh, it later got converted and it got its independence from England and became a republic and became renamed as Zambia. Now, that's when the Rhodesian War started and South Rhodesia became Zambia. And this is the, uh, or Zimbabwe, no, not Zambia, but Northern Rhodesia became Zambia, South Rhodesia became Zimbabwe. And then the Zimbabwean War, you know, took a couple of years for, you know, the, the genocide of the, uh, the farmers and getting it all cleaned up so that all the assets and things could be transferred to the corporations which is what happened during these uh, African wars. So when the war in Northern Indonesia started was when Britain withdrew their assets and withdrew their interests and gave the colony back its freedom. And uh, freedom is a very interesting thing because in that process, uh, all the people that went to Northern Indonesia that were white had to get out of Northern Indonesia because they weren't very welcome and that later happened in South Rhodesia and that's currently busy happening in South Africa. And this has happened across the African continent right from the top over a period of time. This genocide and wipeout has been systematically going on and on and on and on since, since the 1900s. And the reason being that uh, if I own a particular piece of property and I've got the rights to it, and there's minerals on it or something on it that's valuable and you want to buy it from me and I don't want to sell it there's not much we can do about it unless we come to an agreement but if I really put my foot down and said no 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 I'm not selling how are you going to be able to get it from me well you'll have to start pressurizing me in other words bringing refugees bringing illegal immigrants uh, bringing crime government organized crime start uh, disarming the people from the from their firearms, bring new laws and regulations in, make lots of acts and things, what you're allowed and what you're not allowed to do. And right across at the end of the day when they can't get rid of you, they'll cut the fences of your farm, they'll burn the house down, they'll have your wives and your children raped or hurt or murdered, and eventually you will give it up and walk away with nothing. Which is the agenda globally. And these countries, Northern Rhodesia, Rhodesia and South Africa, are the templates that were built for this to be able to imp be implemented on a global scale, which is exactly where we are now as, as planet Earth, with the oppression and the, the enslavement by the system. Admittedly, uh, there's no them or us, it is something that we created, so there's no enemy construct. The, these government entities aren't the enemy, they don't have the power over us whatsoever, because they're just corporations like, like you know, uh, KFC or, or Coca-Cola. They've got no authority over us whatsoever. We, the, the authority that they have over us is in our minds, in our heads, that we give them that authority, but we can take that authority back to ourselves again by withdrawing consent and reorganizing our lives and telling them that we cancelling the contract we had with them because that contract was something that our parents entered into in our absence and that fraud that was committed there needs to be exposed and then we need to come to a new agreement. And by doing that, that contract gets rewritten and we write that contract ourselves on our terms and conditions. And then the whole situation starts to reverse itself and everything starts to change. Now what's very interesting in my particular case in my life, this is a second certificate. Uh, the first one was uh, filled in on the 16th of April 1955, although the, the life born was on the 23rd of March. So it's about a month or so later. What's interesting about this one, this one was done in South Africa and this one was on the 30th of May 1955, but in a different country. Now why would that be? And you'll see the names the same, also all capitalized. This time it's the Union of South Africa 
Now in that days, uh, the Union of South Africa was a British colony, and that became a republic a little bit later in 1961. South Africa was given its freedom back, and it became a republic. And then obviously everybody was very excited, you know, everybody all waved little flags. You know, after the Boer War, and England took all the gold from South Africa, we finally got our gold back again, we're independent, we're a republic, you know, and it was a huge big celebration because the Republic of South Africa got created and Mother England waved us goodbye, took all the bits and pieces and left the country. Obviously what nobody knew at that point in time was what was really busy happening. Is that Republic, similar to Zambia and the name change to Zimbabwe, all those things became corporations. So there was no Republic as such. There was a company called the Republic of South Africa, which is registered on the stock exchange already then way back. So this slow usurping of government by corporations has been happening periodically over time. So in the Northern Rhodesia situation uh, with uh, Zambia, all the children that were born with British birth certificates under the age of 12 had to be executed if they left the country. Again, I can sense that it's it's a heartfelt topic, one that's difficult for you to talk about. No. For me personally, I don't have a vast or encyclopedic knowledge on that particular mm. era <clears throat> of those countries and what was occurring within their political system. So what happened with these children, uh, me being one of them, if they left the country, left the borders, went to another country, because they hold crown certificates and were born as a, as a UK or as a British citizen, they had rights to repatriation. In other words, England was supposed to take those families back and look after them. And that was an obligation on the Crown. And that would cost them a lot of money. So an order was given to execute all the children leaving the countries under 12. And I was one of them. So. Was this an officially stated policy? No. You, you won't, if, if you want to look this up, you can go look at a movie called Africa Adieu, shot in the same time. Africa it's, and you? Adieu. Goodbye Africa. Adio. Adios, yeah. Africa Adieu. And there is a bigger genocide documented that you can look on YouTube right now than what happened during the whole Hitler era. You can see what really happened in Africa, in these countries, at that point in time. No media, no coverage, machine guns, mass graves, people queuing for miles and miles and miles being covered up by bulldozers. And that is really what happened. And these Italians that made the movie Africa Adieu are the only journalists that recorded that stuff. And they, they, they flew in and flew out and they, they recorded bits and pieces of what was going on. But that movie can still be seen and you can, you, you can look at that thing and you'll see that what I'm talking about within the same era, this is exactly how it happened. So as children, we had to get smuggled through the border. Um, I was five at that point. My brother was a little bit older than me, about two or three years older. My sister was born in South Africa, so she wasn't a problem. She was born in South Africa before my parents moved to Northern Rhodesia. And uh, I got smuggled through the border in furniture. And obviously because my parents knew initially when they moved to Zambia, or Lusaka, Northern Rhodesia, that at some point the political stuff could, the shit could hit the fan. And this is why my mother went and registered my birth in South Africa as well, just after I was born. So that I've got a South African birth certificate, that I'm a South African citizen as well as a Zambian citizen. It was a safety measure. It was a safety measure that she did just after my birth, and she did the same with my brother. And uh, this is how we got out and we got hidden with different families. Take your time. For the shit to settle. And uh, we had to restart our lives literally as refugees from that country. Uh, my parents left in those days, they were allowed uh, 200 pounds, which was a lot of money, you know, in, in currency. But that was it. You had to restart your life with absolutely nothing. And this is what happened. So, what nobody understands about this, although it's very emotional, very complicated, why that order was given and why this, these atrocities happened, is because these children with these all capital names did not belong to the parents. 
they were states would have stayed given away and there's nothing you can do now we went to war in south africa later when i was older got drafted got told go to war and fight and that's that and it's all because of the all capitals name because you're a ward of state all the time you, you don't own yourself you do but you don't know it and this is where why the all caps thing comes in and that's why it's so important and that's why globally at the moment it's of critical importance because of the whole refugee thing because all that happens when a human being goes from one country to another country with a birth certificate is that the birth trust gets exported and another one gets created and then another one and another one and another one depending on where you go so I've been in, in different countries this is the fourth country I'm in and uh, I've obviously got it uh, probably by now an Australian trust uh, account as well because you see when the refugees come in on boats on the, on the, on the uh, on the shores and they come out of the boats with absolutely nothing they ask them oh what is your name what is your date of birth and it doesn't matter whether that's true or not true they create documents for them which gives them an identity now i want to ask anybody how the hell can you have an identity that is on a piece of paper how can that be your identity here i am it doesn't get more real than this this is my identity